Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to break down the Toxic Driller build in Deep Rock Galactic. This is one of my favorite builds to use on deep dives, deep dive elites, or regular levels with extreme difficulty. So what is the Toxic Driller build and why is it so effective? Well, we've all been on a deep dive. It's going well, then all hell breaks loose and two or three of your teammates drop like flies. It's in that moment you need to adopt a back to the wall strategy and the driller class mixed with the right weapons can really get you out of a sticky situation. So if you've got a large swarm heading your way and you can't revive your teammates, drill a straight tunnel into the nearest wall. Turn around and shoot out as much corrosive sludge as you can to cover the walls of the tunnel. Basically it means every alien heading your way will arrive at you either dead or on the brink, which will give you the time you need to throw grenades or shoot them down. But it can also backfire if you don't act fast, as the tunnel with one exit and lots of aliens blocking it can be a death trap. However, if done correctly, it creates a deadly killing zone that can give you the time you need to recover and save the team from a mission fail. Okay, so let's break down each element of the loadout, the gear mods and perks to maximize the effectiveness of this loadout. Primary weapon is the corrosive sludge pump. The best feature of this weapon is it makes the environment around you hostile and corrosive to the aliens. So you can shoot out the sludge, then do a runner as the aliens become weaker over time. So firstly, let's look at the overclock. For this build, I would go for a volatile overclock, which means it has good and bad points. The charged shot will break apart into more fragments on impact, with each fragment being more potent. But on the downside, the initial damage of the charged projectiles is reduced. So it's more about long-term damage than the first strike. Okay, let's break down the gear mods. Gear mod one uses an air sensitive compound. That means when the goo is exposed to air, it expands. This makes the puddles cover a larger area on impact, which means more toxic material for the aliens to wade through. Gear mod two uses an atomizer nozzle. This will make your charged shots leave behind more fragments on impact. Gear Mod 3 uses super saturation, which processes the goo after impact, making the effects of the puddles last longer. Fourth mod is spillback extension, which results in less goo being spent when charging. And Gear Mod 5, it uses this acid effect, which makes the goo use more aggressive, meaning more damage per second when the aliens are caught in the goo. So in summary, these mods ensure the goo covers a large area with more fragments per charge shot and an increased duration of the puddles. It also reduces the amount of goo spent on charging and damages enemies covered in goo at a faster rate. Okay, secondary weapon of choice was the experimental plasma charger. So gear mod one for this one, we're gonna use the higher charged plasma energy mod. This increases both direct and area damage of charged projectiles, which is great when you've got lots of bugs stuck in a goo tunnel and you want to finish them off. Gear Mod 2 is an overcharged plasma accelerator. This increases the velocity of the projectiles, the normal ones allowing for quicker attacks, which is great when you're under pressure. Gear Mod 3 uses a tweaked radiator. This helps the weapon shed heat, letting you shoot more rounds before overheating occurs. Gear Mod 4 is a high density battery and basically this adds more ammunition. The fifth mod is Flying Nightmare. This makes charged projectiles pass through enemies dealing damage in a wide sphere, but it doesn't explode on impact. So again, this is great if you've got a tunnel with bugs in it and it will go through all of them. Right, next, projectile weapons are very useful. So what are we gonna use? We're gonna use the HE grenades. The high explosive grenade, it has a medium kill radius and it can be used to remove dirt or bugs or both. You get six in total, and they're great for those toxic tunnels for maximum damage. Right, what about tools? Okay, let's look at the tools. In terms of the pickaxe, the first gear mod utilizes the power attack. That's one we'll go for. Great for dealing damage to threats in the tunnels. The second gear mod uses a shockwave, which increases the power attack area. So again, it will hit more of those ones in the tunnel. Satchel charges, they're a key item when dealing large volumes of enemies and the first gear mod is the fragmentary shell which creates a larger damage radius. This is good if you're getting swamped in a tunnel and you need a bit of space to create a circular death room. The second gear mod uses a kill switch. This allows you to disarm unused charges which can be helpful because you know you don't 
necessarily always want to blow them up in the tunnel sometimes i put a charge in a tunnel as like a last resort effect so if it's all getting a bit dodgy blow up the satchel charge and then drill away to give yourself some space but if you don't you can always pick it up with this mod third mod extra satchel charge lets you carry one more fourth mod rock mover which means it will be a larger area upon detonation and that's about it. So right, we're, what's next? Reinforced power drills. Now the drills are very useful for carving a path through the game world. And in terms of mods, what do I use? Well, the first mod, expanded fuel tanks. These allow you to carry more fuel. I always like this perk as when, you know, the drop pod arrives at the end of the mission, drilling your way to the exit is probably the safest route for all the team members, in particular with deep dives, because it's very hairy on the way out. So I would always go for that mod. Gear mod two, uses streamlined integrity checks. This allows you to drill sooner after the overheat. Third mod, supercharged motor. You can drill faster. Fast drilling is great in the deep dives because you need to get out of there pretty fast sometimes. And the fourth mod has an increased tank pressure. This allows you to carry more fuel. It's always good to have extra fuel because you never know when you're gonna need a digger tunnel. Finally, we've got the armor. So it's the mole armor rig, you can't change that. That's just a preset. So you've got three mods to choose. First one, bigger mineral bag. I would always go with that because it just means you don't have to keep going back to Molly to offload your minerals. Second gear mod increases max health. That's the one I would go for. And the third gear mod, temperature insulation, meaning flames will do half as much damage. You know, you can go with anything on that. I always like that one because I tend to go to the magma core levels a lot. And I have friends who use flamethrowers. You know what the friendly fire is like in this? That's say no more, say no more. But you know, you can go with anyone on the third. The fourth mod, I'd go Shockwave, which means when your shield breaks violently, you know, if the enemies are all around you, that's really helpful. Right, perks. Firstly, what do we need for perks? Passive perks, let's have a look. Firstly, Thorns, I'd say is useful anytime because when an enemy melee attacks you, it takes a certain amount of damage. Great for the close quarters tunnel combat. Second one, Elemental Insulation, gives you 25% resistance to the elemental damage. That's always helpful because there's lots of that in the levels. Thirdly, I'd go Vampire, allows you to regain health when you kill a medium sized or larger creature with a melee attack. Again, melee attacks in the tunnels, always good for getting your health back. Then you've got active perks. Um, firstly, I would go for Berserker. This allows you to go Berserk for 10 seconds. During that time, you get to have a melee boost and a lightning fast power attack recharge. That's very helpful in the pressure situations of the tunnels. Secondly is Dash providing a burst of speed, allowing you to get out of a tricky situation and ignore slowdown effects. Right, so that's all the settings, so we're pretty much done. Lastly, I'll just break down the apparel, the clothing setup that we have for this character. I mean, you've got lots of options. You don't have to have it like this, but the one I've been using in this video, I'll put a screenshot on the screen now so you can just uh, capture it. Okay, there you go. That was all the settings for it. So if you want the character to look like that one, that's how you do it but you know there's lots of possibilities you can go for go that is the toxic driller build it's a very useful build for the more challenging missions not one that i use all the time but it's a good option to go for um, i hope you found the video helpful useful let me know if this build works for you drop your thoughts in the comments if you'd like to watch my other videos on deep rock i'll put links in the description but for now thank you for watching i appreciate it this is photography gamer signing off thank you